Hello. I want to talk about... Well, you probably guessed from the title, I want to talk about passive graphics cards. Mainly these four. Not so interested in... Well, I am, but GT710 and stuff like that, I'm not so bothered about. Because they are cheap and terrible. But these four cards are currently my favourite cards, I think. No, I'm definitely certain they're my favourite cards. This is what I use in my daily driver, which is the GT1030. And this is the GTX 750Ti, which I use in my work machine. We also have the 1050Ti and the 1650. These are all Palette's Carmex cards. And this is a Zotac zone. For whatever reason, Zotac don't seem to do higher end. I say higher end. Mid-range passive cards anymore. They seem to only stick with the low end. Which is a shame because a 75 watt card can be called. The last one I think I did was the GT630. So I might have to correct me on that. But I think that was the last one. The last one I had from them was the GT450. Uh, and after that I've just stuck with other cards. But these are pretty good. Now you might think that well, people have said. Well while these cards are nice you can never use them in a real machine. This card sits in a fractal node. 220 works perfectly fine all day no issues whatsoever don't really use this one because for whatever reason it's pretty rare in a passive card but this one has some pretty terrible coil wine i'm looking to replace it with another card to improve it but for now that isn't really being used and this one's going to my next gaming machine to replace my gtx 1080 ti which might sound crazy but I think a 250 watt TDP card is a little overkill. Especially for the games I play these days. So we're going to be using this. Okay, so while these aren't powerhouses in terms of cards, they're perfectly good mid-range cards. Now there's a big gap between these types of cards now and what people would class as mid-range. People would class, they say, the 3060 as a mid-range card. I much prefer these cards. Now... People will say you must have a fan to keep these cool. No, you don't. They run absolutely fine. No problem at all. There is a little bit of throttling, which I will show in a moment with this particular card. In fact, they all do it. But it's only in when you stress it. Well, it's only when you're stressing the card. So you will lose a little bit of performance, but you're talking one or two frames. At that point, you can just whack a good case fan in you know, large, slow spinning, and just push some air over it. Of course, people might complain the fact that the fins are going this way and not this way, which is even the case here on this card. But you can get most cases now with a fan that goes on the top, pushing air down or pulling up. So it's irrelevant. Coming in the next couple of weeks, this should be going into a Dan A4, completely fanless build which I hope to cover soon. But, you know, enough about this. Let's go look at some benchmarks and some games with these cards. So you can see the performance difference between, let's say, a GT1030 and a GTX 1650. I mean, this card is double the price of this. So there is that. But these are, if you're in second-hand market, these are about £100. These are about 60 70 And these can be picked up about... Well, 40, 50, depending on where you get it. And these are a 100 plus mark, if you can actually find one. I wouldn't pay more than 150 brand new for this, though. So let's get on to the benchmark, shall we? Let's start off with some 3D mark to get as a bit of a baseline. In Fire Strike, it's pretty much what you expect. GT1030 is the slowest, 1650 is the highest, and it's the same with Time Spy and Night Raid, as well as Wildlife. The GT1030 and the 750Ti get a little close in places, in some cases sometimes faster, but overall it's pretty much linear across the board. Moving on to some gaming benchmarks, this is Final Fantasy XV, and it's a similar story. You've got the GT1030 right at the bottom, and the 1650 right at the top with everything else in between. So while these cards aren't 
that powerful. They can handle some games. Final Fantasy 15 is not one of them, unless you use a GTX 1650. Moving on to Final Fantasy 14. Now things get a little different in this particular game. Frame rate cap maybe, I didn't look into it. But the 1650 gets about the same score as the 1050 Ti, for whatever reason. This is on the lowest setting, so at that point you can bump it up. We're getting solid over 100 FPS on that card anyway, so you might as well increase the settings. But the game is still playable and let's say the GT1030 and the 750Ti. It's just some points you might drop down into the 30s depending on how much is going on on the screen. And here's Doom Eternal on Ultra and on Low. The 2 gig cards, the 1030 and the 750Ti can't run on Ultra, but the other cards can. And as you can see, we're getting, you know, kind of low frame rates on the lower cards and the 1050Ti is struggling a bit. And as you can see, the 1650 runs Doom Eternal just fine. Which is nice, so if you're looking for slightly more modern games, the 1650 is where it's at. Which is not bad for a 75 watt card. And then older games like Alien Isolation, perfectly playable on all the cards really. With obviously the 1650 hitting silly frame rate. So you can play it on a nice high frame rate monitor. But even on the GT1030 on Ultra, it plays just fine. Don't quite hit that 60 FPS average. Just knock down a few settings and it'll be perfectly playable. Now with games like Far Cry 5, the GT1030 and the 750Ti can't handle it at all. This is on low. The GTX 1050Ti and the GTX 1650 can handle it no problem on low. And knock it up to ultra and these are still getting playable frame rates as long as you don't want that solid 60. And where would a selection of games be without Crisis? Surprisingly, depending on your opinion and what settings you want to use, the GT1030, 750Ti, in fact all of the cards, can play Crisis. The only card that's able to play it on the maximum setting, with everything turned to full, is the 1650, which just about gets that 60 FPS average. But if you're willing to tweak with the settings, all these cards can handle Crisis just fine, assuming you've got a good enough CPU. And here we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider on low at 1080p. The GT1030 and the 750Ti just can't handle it at this resolution. They're okay at 720, they do struggle, but they can just about play it. But the 1050Ti and the 1650, they can handle it just fine. If you want that solid 60fps though, you're going to have to use the 1650, which isn't a shock, it is a newer game. But overall, that is reasonably impressive, so you can play a large selection of older and modern games using completely passive cards. In terms of temperatures, these cards will top out about 80 degrees, at which point you may see a little bit of throttling, but they're built in such a way that they don't really seem to get above that temperature and handle it just fine, which is absolutely brilliant. So you don't have to worry about temperatures with these, and I use these in small enclosed cases with no airflow, and they're absolutely fine. Of course, if you're slightly worried, one nice case fan, nice and big somewhere in the case to get a bit of airflow, will keep the temperatures considerably lower. But overall, the temperatures of these cards is absolutely, absolutely fine. Well, there you go. As you can see, the no shock, slowest to fastest. Sometimes these get a little close to each other but overall these are very slow cards though you can pick this one up very cheap. The 2 gig does limit them but the 4 gig card, the 1050 Ti and the 1650 I mean they're absolutely fine. They do struggle running some very modern games at 60 frames per second but honestly I think the performance is absolutely fine to the point the fact that I am Going forward, using this as my main card, so it's perfectly adequate for me, especially at 1080p gaming. I do have a 4K monitor, I just don't care about 4K, so I'm quite happy to run my games at 1080p because for all intents and purposes they look fine. 4K is nice and all, but uh, I don't particularly care too much. So that's all I really wanted to say today, bit of an odd video granted, but I do very much like passive cards 
passive calling anything that makes stuff quiet. So I like to share what I can. And if people are out there looking for a nice passive card, well, this is the current selection. Granted, there's no AMD. That is because their cards use far more power than these cards. And it's only Nvidia there recently, they've been able to do 75 watt cards. I can't see a 30 series card hitting the 75 watt bracket. So it might be a couple of years before we see a replacement to this card. But in the interim, this is a perfectly adequate card. So that's it really. Thank you for watching. Like, dislike, all that nonsense. Subscribe if you can, please. This channel does need subscriptions. And any comments below, please let me know and I'll try and answer them. This one's always been used. That one's going into a game machine and this is my daily driver. So these three cards I can tell you a lot about. That one just sits in the cupboard at the moment. So just let me know. But anyway, until next time. Goodbye.